because as I mentioned, I am a senior software engineer, and today I'm going to talk about PWA and service workers, benefits, downside, how to use it, caching strategies, and so on. So agenda to this meeting will be the next. Uh, what is PWA, main benefits of PWA, service worker, manifest, HTTP versus HTTPS and why it matters, service worker life cycle, caching strategies, what is Workbox, using different caching strategies in the world service worker template, and at the end I will show a little demo, so stay tuned for that. So what is PWA? So according to official documentation, PWA is a progressive web application and is an app that's built using web platform technologies, but that provides a user experience like that of a platform specific app. So basically, PWA is like a hybrid between web, web application and standalone application. This technology is basically an attempt to bring the best from the both worlds with some benefits and some downsides as well. So main benefits of PWA is like it can work without active network, so basically offline mode, which is pretty useful. So also uh, PWA can be installed on the device and be used as a standalone application. And this item is basically a double-edged sword because for the one edge, yeah, it's a benefit because basically you can install your web application as, as a standalone application on your home screen and use from home screen, right? But it's uh, more like a downside as well another edge because in order to launch PWA from uh, home screen, PWA will basically launch the web browser at first and then launch your web application in that browser. So basically, uh, PWA is dependent on web browser and web browser will be more like a bottleneck. You will depend on the performance of your web browser in your application. So keep it, keep it in mind on it. So another another benefit is the caching. Caching is basically the main bread and butter of PWA. It's the main reason why so many web applications are using PWA. And last or and not the least item is the backend operations. So basically, PWA is using service worker as a main tool, and you can basically configure this service worker to work like interceptor of your network requests. So basically, you can intercept any of the failed network requests and provide with uh, some mock data so you can mitigate all the network requests by using service workers and law. So uh, today, but for the sake of this meeting, we will be just talking about caching strategies. So service worker, as I mentioned, it's basically like a proxy middleware that is working and basically performing in between your web application and uh, network activity, let's just say. And basically, when a web application tries to make some network request, service worker will intercept those network requests, and based on configuration, it service worker will decide to provide data from the network or provide data from the cache based on configuration and caching strategies. Manifest manifest is more like a digital configuration file for PWA. So basically, by using manifest, you can specify what icon you should use when you install your PWA on your home screen or to what display mode or start URL on background color and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So HTTP versus HTTPS and why it matters. So according to AWS, HTTP messages are plain text, which means unauthorized parties can easily access and read them over the internet. In a contrast, HTTPS transmits all data in an encrypted form. When the user submits sensitive data, they can be confident that no third parties can be in, can intercept the data over the network. What it means for service worker is next. Service workers will be supported only from trusted and secure sources, which means full support and necessity of, of HTTPS. So basically, as I mentioned, a service worker can intercept your network request. And the service worker can only work with trusted network resources because uh, for HTTP perspective, you can easily hijack those requests and eject some malicious data. And service worker could not validate if this data is trusted or not. So uh, service worker need to work with HTTPS in order to ensure the user that data is trusted and secure. That is the main reason. Uh, the next slide will be about life cycle. So basically, service worker have three items or three steps in life cycle. That is registration, installation, and activation. 
So the first step is registration. Registration is the initial step of the service worker lifecycle. It informs the browser regarding the location of service working in JavaScript file. So basically, it's um, some generic example how we can do this. Uh, so basically, you can add even listener to load event. And uh, here in this example, we are just checking if uh, our browser is supported, is supporting service worker functionality. And if yes, we just register our service worker. After registration comes installation. A service worker fires as the install event after registration. Install is only called once per service worker and won't fire again until it's updated. So basically, when registration is done in the service worker file, we can add even listener on the install step. And usually on this step, uh, people add in a procedure of caching all of your static assets in your application. It's a good place where you can put this functionality. And after installation comes activation, when updated service worker is instant and the waiting phase ends, it's activated and the whole service worker is discarded. So basically, here's an example how you can handle this event. So basically, you can add event listeners to activate event. And here is this example. Basically, we are checking the cache and see if it's valid or not and delete all those invalid cache. But you can actually can add what you desire in his, this step, you can basically notify users that, okay, you are ready to work with service worker on some other activities as well. This is up, up to you. So caching strategies, my bread and butter of the PWA. So basically there are five caching strategies, cache only, network only, cache first, network first, and style wire in the level of data. So let's take, talk about cache only. Cache only is mainly self-explanatory strategy. So basically, when the application tries to make a network request, service worker will intercept this network request and tries to provide data from cache only and send to the provider response to web application. Network only, it's uh, also self-explanatory actually. So when web application tries to make a network request, service worker will intercept this network request and provide data from the network itself. This is a useful strategy when you are trying to specify to service workers that some of the data you do not need actually to cache. It's about PA data, some hash keys, some encrypted data, and so on, so on. So basically, with this strategy, you specify uh, service worker to not cache the data, some of the data. And it will be provided only from network itself. Cache-first strategy is more complex, but not so, so much. So basically, when service worker tries to, sorry, when web application tries to make a network request, the service worker will intercept this network request and tries to provide data from the cache. But when there is no data in the cache, service worker will make a network request to the network, get the data from the network, put the data into the cache, and provide the data from the cache. Network first is something similar. When the web application tries to make a network request, the service worker will intercept this network request and tries to provide data from the network. But if the internet connection is lost, then service worker tries to provide data from the cache instead. And style wire validate is more complex but useful strategy when you want to keep uh, your cache up to date always. So basically, when a web application tries to make a network request, service worker intercepts this network request and uh, tries to provide data from the cache. But in the background, it also fires a network request to the network in order to get data, fresh data from the network, and that puts this data into the cache. In that way, uh, your service worker just update in cache itself. So basically, you will be sure that all your cache data will be up to date. So Workbox, what is Workbox? Uh, so basically Workbox is provided by Google in order to work with service worker. It's basically a toolbox with a bunch of models that you can use in order to generate your service worker or work with caching strategies and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very useful tool. So in Workbox, there are basically two types or two methods how you can generate a service worker by using generate SW method or inject manifest method. Let's take a look closer on that. So generate service worker, it's a more simple way to generate your service worker. It's 
pretty straightforward. You basically import this method from the workbox build library and add some basic configuration to them to this method. For example, where you where you need to put your generated service worker, what folder should you use, uh, what from where you need to cache your files, right? So global pattern of your files that need to be cached, uh, ignored pattern. So uh, files you, you should ignore in order uh, when you cache your files. Some additional configuration, for example, skip Python. It's a useful configuration when you basically say your service worker to activate itself as soon as install is install. Uh, step is over and after that you can basically add some additional logic for example after generate service work is done you can basically put some log uh, activity in order to log some data regarding your generated process and then after that you can just uh, launch your uh, javascript file and voila you will have your service worker a direct manifest is more complex method because it requires a general service worker template to in order to generate it. But uh, with it comes some benefits before because you can basically you can uh, more uh, you can create more complex service worker with some different cache strategies that we discussed earlier. For example, here is some generic. I'm sorry. For example, here is some generic uh, service worker template. For example, here is client claim, which means that uh, we basically tell our service worker to take control of the page as soon as activating phase is done. Here we specify what uh, resources we need to pre-cache, some navigation fallback, and uh, also we are adding skip waiting as well in order to activate our service worker as soon as installation stage is done. So uh, Webpack and uh, usage uh, Webbox in Webpack. So basically Webpack is using Webbox under the hood in order to generate service worker, but with some twist, some big twist, because in older versions of uh, React applications uh, where Webpack version three is used, people are used to have service worker right, straight away from the box, right? When they execute an APN run build and uh, they see, okay, I have service worker registered, cool. That's awesome. But in the newer version of a pack, they do not have such functionality and they like, why? Why is the service worker is not generated as itself? Because in the pack version three, there is a generic service work method is used. So basically more generic service worker will be generated by the application. And uh, in the pack version four, you actually need to create your own template, service worker template and put it in source folder. And the pack will search for this uh, template. And if it's found it, then it will be proceeded to generate service worker by injecting manifest. Different caching strategies uh, in service worker template. So basically it's really straightforward. So you can, uh, and also define your caching strategy by a set way. Basically, you're using register root. Then you specify a resource by URL or by a regular expression, how you like. And then you basically call a caching strategy from the box strategy model, in which you specify a cache name, some additional parameters, match option, for example. There are three of them. Ignore search, which will, which will ignore any search parameters in URLs. Uh, ignore methods that will be ignoring uh, method filtering because register root only will be triggering in the cat method. But you can specify or disable it and make sure you uh, cache in all your methods. And ignore very true. It means that we'll be ignoring uh, very uh, header in your request. Also, you can apply some additional plugins to your caching. For example, here we're applying some useful plugin, which uh, basically checks uh, what status of our network request. For example, here is zero and 200, which means you will specify to cache only successful request and not anything else. And basically it's really straightforward. You actually change your network request by simply changing the model. Network only. Cache first, network first, table validate. As you can see, the other parts is basically remains the same. And I am going to present some demo, live demo for our presentation. So let me just adjust my screen for that a little bit. Yeah. So let me. That's it. So here you can see a 
service worker template where I put it on the source, fo source folder, as I mentioned previously, you actually need to name your service worker template as it's shown right now on the screen, service worker JS. Here you can see some basic configuration, client, cl client claim, application root, uh, and then register root, some additional, you can basically cache additional assets in additional uh, cache uh, by simply specifying them in Redux expression. Or you can, as I mentioned previously, you can cache your resources by direct URL, for example, here on the demo we'll be getting data from Star Wars characters from a free API. So, yeah, and we'll be just uh, demo how uh, all the strategies is working. So, for example, cache only, network only, cache first, network first, tail while we'll the data. And um, yeah, so, and how we can register our service worker. So, basically, we can register our service worker by using four workbox as well. Uh, for example, here I created some function that uh, basically will be create a new instance of workbox model where I can put the path to the service worker file. Then I can, as I mentioned, I can just add some event listener to activate the state to just message me that, okay, service worker is activated, here you go. And basically I can try later, I can try to register and report some status, status success, or if it fails, status error. And yeah, I for, for example, in React application, you can use use effect hook in order to check if the browser is support uh, is uh, if the browser support uh, the service work functionality and then files this function register service work. So this is application. So basically it consists of two parts. Uh, gallery is some static methods, uh, sorry, static assets and types of data caching strategies. So there's five fields for five caching strategies. So in terms of dev tools, you can see what service work is currently running. Running, For example, here you can open application, application tab in dev tools, and you can see the service worker. And as you can see that service worker is currently activated and running. So uh, all the cache data that service worker is used are placed in cache storage. For example, this is a cache storage for our static, static images. And then we have some additional caching uh, fields, for example, additional caches, static cache, network first, cache first, and style while validate. So about the caching of static assets, what it gives us the next, we can basically turn off the network uh, connection of our tab and basically hit the start or reload button. As you can see, nothing failed, uh, everything showing, everything is working because even if we have failed to fetch our resources from the network, but service worker provided this data from the cache, so we are free to go to use our application in offline mode as well. Let me turn it on. So uh, let's start from network only. As I mentioned, this is a strategy when you're trying to fetch your data only from network. And basically, when we are hitting get data, it will fire two, two network requests. And there is a question, why two network requests? Why only one? Because this is this network request was fired from a web application, but as I mentioned previously, service worker will intercept this network request, and basically based on network based on caching strategy, it will fire its own uh, network request in order to get data. As you can see, initiator service worker, not the application. Then it will be fetching data, and then it will be providing the data back to web application. And in this network request, you will see that data was fetched from the service worker, not from the network. But if I just simply disable the network and then tries to get data from the network, you will be guessing that error because this data is provided only from network, not from the cache. Uh, the next one, cache only, is the interesting one. If you followed my uh, presentation, you already know the answer, what will be the next. But if and uh, if I have network connection, but without any caching information uh, for this field, this network request will actually fail 
because there is no data in the cache in order to provide to this field. So even with the network connectivity, but without any cache information, this network request for this field, for this strategy will be failing. Uh, the cache first strategy is an interesting one because uh, for this field, we already have some cache information here, cache first for this request. And basically when we hit the get data button, it will provide the strength from the cache, right? You can see only one request is fired from the web application and basically the service worker will provide this data for us. But if we just clean the cache, kill the cache, cache first, delete, and then try to make a request again, it fires to network request, right? Similar to network only, but in this case, it will actually cache the data. And in uh, future cases, it just provide data from the cache. Uh, network first is uh, similar to the cache first, but as I mentioned, is data will be provided for the network first. For example, here, even if we have the cache data in our cache storage for this request, we will just hit the get data button. And again, two requests will be firing, one from web application and one from service working order to get data from the cache. But uh, when we disable the network line and try to get data, it will be provided from the cache. But as you can see, the uh, uh, net network request from service worker will be failed because there is no network connection for the stuff. But it will be provided to the web application from the cache nevertheless. And uh, stale while revalidate is a pretty interesting one because when I hit the get data button, it will be provided straight away, but with a little twist. For example, here you can see the two network requests from the web application service worker, but uh, pay close attention to the time because uh, when a web application tries to get data from the network, the service worker will provide this data from the cache and time of the request is just two milliseconds. But as I mentioned earlier, this strategy will try to revalidate cache from the network and the second uh, network request will be firing, which is takes some time, 400 milliseconds. And again, when we disable the network, and trying to get data, it will be provided from the cache, same as network first, but the network request in order to revalidate our cache will be failing because there is no network uh, available to us. And basically that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I will try to answer as best as I could.